So today I want to cover Amcrest cameras, specifically the 4K PoE bullet cameras, and discuss how I configured it with Blue Iris. Though this is not a full tutorial on Blue Iris, I will go through some of the settings I used on this 4K camera to get the best performance. If you want to know more about this camera and how it performs, then watch the rest of this video, and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications so you'll be notified of any new content. So I've been using real link cameras for a long time, but a couple of them started going bad recently and I wanted to replace them with new ones. I initially bought a couple of the newer real links, but I was having issues connecting to Blue Iris and discovered that several of their newer cameras had some compatibility issues with Blue Iris, which is my software of choice. So not being able to use it with Blue Iris was a showstopper for me. This left me searching for some decent cameras with a good price, a course that would work with Blue Iris. Step forward a bit and I decided to switch back to Amcrest. I bought both the indoor pan and tilt, ceiling mounts, and outdoor bullet cameras. And I gotta say, they've definitely stepped up their game in terms of performance, quality, and price since I last used them. Spec-wise, this worked better than the real link with an attractive price and most importantly everything was compatible and worked perfectly. The camera itself is a 4K 3840 by 2160 has a viewing angle of about 105 degrees with a night vision distance rating of about 98 feet. Its uh, focal length is 2.8 millimeters and it has a um, micro SD card and of course you can record to the cloud but we're not going to do any of that. We're going to record to Blue Iris. It's weatherproof IP67, and it's got an H.265 and H.264 uh, video compression. It's a PoE camera, so you can plug it into your virtually any PoE switch. So now that we've kind of covered the specs, let's get into the hardware of the camera. We'll mount it, test it, and I'll show you some configurations in Blue Iris that I use. So everyone's going to mount things a little bit different. Here's how I mounted mine. There's a couple different examples. I used both uh, single and double gang boxes for different applications to where I could run my PoE connection and actually mount the cameras to the lids. And I've also had direct mounts underneath. So now that you've seen a couple of examples of how this gets mounted, let's go through the setup and configuration. Okay, so once you've plugged in your camera into your power or ethernet switch or your power adapter of some sort, however you power your device, the next thing you can do is actually get it configured. So for Amcrest cameras, um, you can download this configuration tool from the website. And basically this makes it a lot easier for you to not only see the listing of your devices, but also get a quick access to them to make some changes. So there's a couple of things that I normally do with these things. The first thing I want to point out is if you look at all these cameras that I have listed here, all of them but one use HTTP port 1095. And that's because out of the box, they come with 80. And that's the new camera that we just plugged in. But I changed them all to 1095. Number one, I don't want anything on port 80. Um, and secondly, this just isolates everything onto one port um, that I know what it, it is and what's being traveled across it. So it makes it a little bit easier for me. There's nothing special about 1095. It's just a number that I picked out. I just want to get it away from port 80. So if we're going to be changing that. I'm going to show you how to do it on, on an Amcrest camera. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go into the web configuration screen. And we're going to use the admin admin default password. And pleasant to see it's forcing me to change my password. So let's give it a new password. Okay, so I've changed my password and I'm now able to log into the camera. Of course, this is looking at a bookshelf right now, but this will be mounted in my backyard by the pool when I get that far. First thing I want to do is I want to make some configurational changes to this. I'm going to go ahead and click on setup. I'm not going to change much here under the camera configuration. I'm going to pretty much leave everything alone. Under video, I'm going to take a look at my settings to make sure that I'm happy with the resolution. I can downgrade this if I want to. For this camera, since it's looking at quite a range, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it at a 15 frames per second frame rate. And I may drop the bitrate setting down by one just to 
kind of conserve bandwidth. And I'm going to say here under the watermark settings, I'm going to say pool. And we'll go ahead and save that. The next one that we want to actually look at is the overlay. And this one for me is important. So the channel title, uh, I don't want it to say IPC. I want it to say pool, right? So I'm going to change that, hit save. And then I want to go over to the logo. I want to disable the Amcrest logo, hit save. And that's about it for this page. So I've got my label, got rid of my logo. So I've got a lot of work to do under networking here, but I'm going to save that for a little bit till we get through some of these other options because it does force you to reboot the camera. So let's take a look at information. It's really nothing here, it's version numbers and such. Um, under general system, I do want to change the time and date to 12 hours. So I'm going to hit save and pretty much don't need anything else here. You do want to check the auto maintain. Um, some of the older cameras or some of the models do come up with the auto reboot uh, checked on. You want to remove that. It's not necessary on it. most of the newer cameras and it does sometimes mess things up. So make sure that's uh, turned off. And that's pretty much all we got to do in this settings. This takes care of all of the cameras. The last thing for us to do is go into the network. So I'm, on my TCP IP, I'm going to leave everything alone. I'm not going to touch anything when it comes to DHCP. I want the, the firewall to, I want the DHCP server in my firewall to assign it. Give it a static IP into my firewall. I'm not going to do it from here. I can, but it's much easier and a lot easier to manage to set it from the firewall. That way I know if I need to make a change, I can just do it from one place. I don't have to go to each individual camera. So I'm gonna leave all this alone. Under connection, I do wanna change this uh, port 80 to 1095 to match the rest of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And of course it's gonna tell me to reboot or that it's rebooting. And then there's one thing you're gonna to wanna to know when you do need to re-access this camera, if you want to do it separately outside of the software, is that you do need to put the port number on the end of the IP address that you're trying to access. So it's in the middle of rebooting here, so we'll give it a second. And there we go. So now I can log in with my new password. And there we have it. So we've got everything configured the way that we want. Let's close this up. If we flip back over to here, you can see that this still says the same, but if we hit refresh, it now says 1095. So this is the entry that we had before. I used to say port 80, it now says 1095, and we're pretty much good to go. So from here, we've pretty much got our camera set, so we know what the IP address is, and we know what the port number is. We're now ready to go into Blue Iris. So the one, one thing I would ask you to take a look at at this point before trying to set it up in the Blue Iris, Decide if you want to leave this camera as a DHCP or to go into your router and actually assign it a fixed IP, which again, I would recommend you do. I'm going to do that so that I can keep it within this range. I have set all my cameras between uh, 192.168.0.50 and .74. So I can have up to 24 cameras in that range. My firewall rule will block them all from accessing external internet. Um, again, these are things that you don't have to do. I do it because I'm very security conscious when it comes to the especially IoT devices. So anyway, now that we've got it configured, I'm going to go ahead and change my IP address, and then I'll walk you through how to configure it in Blue Iris. Okay, now we're ready to actually install it in the Blue Iris. So let's go ahead and start by hitting the plus sign, and we'll give it a name. I'm going to enable the direct to disk and click OK. So at this point, what we want to do is actually type in the IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the IP that I configured. And again, since I changed my port numbers, I'm going to go ahead and put the port number in. And then I'm going to make sure that I've got the right password because it's going to need to detect the camera. And once I've done that, I can just hit Find Inspect. And it just quickly scans it, finds all the settings. Now, there's a couple things you need to do to really address performance here. The first thing you want to do is set a substream. So if you go ahead and change the substream, you'll see that it finds the substream channel. And this will give you a, this will make a big difference in performance in terms of how you view it. Because Blue Iris will manage the substream and the full stream automatically with the understanding that the full stream is what's being recorded. So once I'm done with that, I click OK. And then I want to check a couple things. Down here, 
I want to make sure this says default. And the reason I want to say default is because I want to change the default encoding method or decoding method in the actual software itself. So I'm going to click OK for now. Go over to settings. And we'll go here over to cameras. And under cameras here is where we're going to select the hardware accelerated decode. Um, you have a couple options here. You can try both the Intel and the Intel VPP. The VPP will give you slightly better performance if your CPU supports it. So once you do, you've got that set up. Now all of your cameras will try to use hardware decoding. And as you can see from my CPU down here, I now have 13 cameras running and I'm barely using 14% CPU. Anyway, overall the upgrade to the Amcrest cameras has been really worthwhile. And since I started making this video, I've now upgraded 11 of the 12 cameras in my system and I'll soon be replacing the last one. As not all things are perfect, the one thing I did want to point out is though the Amcrest cameras have a good IR nighttime performance, it was slightly less than what I saw from the Rio Link cameras that they actually replaced. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, don't forget to give it a like. I've left some affiliate links below if you're interested in any of these cameras. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.